Um, this, <laughs> this panel is a discussion of the poet as hermit and the poet as social being. And I want to say first how happy I am to share the stage uh, with Arthur and with Gary. Um, I was just saying to Gary, who I have never met, that um, one of the first books of poems I remember owning and being proud of was Myths and Texts. <laughs> it's amazing. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Didn't influence me one bit, you know, but <laughs> not true. Um, I, I have um, recently had occasion to write an essay about Cademan or Cadman, um, you know, depending upon which source you believe in terms of pronunciation. Uh, the first English poet whose name we know. Before Cademan, uh, all the other poems, the Beowulf poet, uh, the author of many of those beautiful lyrics are anonymous. But we know about Cademan because of Bede, who um, in 680 composed a history of the English people. And in chapter 24, he tells a story about a poet, a story which seems to me to um, be a kind of uh, instructive potential fable for our topic. Bede tells Cademan's story, an origin myth for the art of poetry, a fable about the nature of inspiration, and a parable about the social and solitary nature of our art. Cademan lived most of his life with no skill in the art of composing verse. When a harp was passed at a party and each guest expected to contribute a poem or a song, Cademan would slip out of the room so as to avoid the, hum the humiliation of having no poem to contribute. One evening he had done just that and gone out to the stable where he cared for the animals. He lay down to rest, and something marvelous occurred in his dream. A person appeared to him in his sleep, Bede writes, and saluting him by his name said, Cademan, sing some song for me. He answered, I cannot sing, for that was the reason why I left the entertainment and retired to this place, because I could not sing. The other who talked to him replied, however, you shall sing. What shall I sing? rejoined he, sing the beginning of created, sing the beginning of created beings, said the other. And my guess is that most poets will recognize something of themselves in Cademan's story. He's an inarticulate man who can't find the right words in the company of his fellows, yet when he's alone in the company of beasts, which is perhaps where he feels he belongs, something provokes him. Someone appears in the dark and says, sing some song for me or as Susan Mitchell translate the translates the phrase in her poem, Rapture, sing me something. Sing me something is as good a description as I know of, of what the world or the dark or the visiting spirit seems to say to the poet, as if we were presented with an imperative, a request, a desire coming from somewhere. Our work is to speak back, but to whom or to what? Cademan's interlocutor has usually been understood as an angel, and that's the tradition Denise Levertov honors in this beautiful poem from 1967. It's called Cademan. All others talked as if talk were a dance. Clodhopper I, with clumsy feet, would break the gliding ring. Early I learned to hunch myself close by the door. Then when the talk began, I'd wipe my mouth and wend unnoticed back to the barn to be with the warm beasts, dumb among body sounds of the simple ones. I'd see by a twist of lit rush the motes of gold moving from shadow to shadow, slow in the wake of deep untroubled sighs. The cows munched or stirred or were still. I was at home and lonely, both in good measure until the sudden angel affrighted me, light effacing my feeble beam, a forest of torches, feathers of flame, sparks up flying. But the cows, as before, were calm, and nothing was burning, nothing but I, as that hand of fire touched my lips and scorched my tongue and pulled my voice into the ring of the dance. Now, Bede doesn't actually say that the one who appears to Cadman is an angel. He refers to the apparition as quidam, Latin for someone. Someone says, sing me something. Someone, something. The statement couldn't be much more open-ended. To what extent do we understand the process that calls a poem into being? 
someone or something comes to us in our solitude, in the dark, literally, or in the darkness of not knowing, and says, sing me something. It's the uncovering of what is to be sung and how, which are not two separate things, but an intertwining spiraling, like a DNA molecule, that gives this process its tension, frustration, and at least sometimes, elation. The someone who speaks may be a vessel of divine fire, as Levertov says, or we might understand him as a shadow self, that side of us which is by nature in darkness, like a side of the moon, and walks a few steps ahead of us into what we don't know yet. Or we might construe him as an embodiment of absence, a sense of lack within, something incomplete requires our attention. Or maybe the angel is an incarnation of the desire for order, the pressing need to locate and define patterns in the chaos of experience. Or perhaps he or she is a form of the desire to praise. When faced with something beautiful, Emerson says of poets, they are not content with admiring. They seek to embody it in new forms. <laughs> we could also say that the phantom who appears to the poet, summoning words, is some premonition or anticipation of the reader. I think both the writer of the poem and its reader turn to poetry in order to find some music that echoes what we can't say, to read the inscription of our common lot, to be challenged and engaged, to be less alone, to be startled awake.